Hey everybody, this is a ZX81 as we're all familiar with, or a Timex Sinclair 1000 if that's the one you have. They're nice little computers, but they are lacking in many things. One thing they lack is an actual on and off light. How do you know it's on? Yeah, you could say if the wire is plugged in the side, it's on. If you got something on the screen, it's on. But something as simple as just an LED to let you know it's on, it misses that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add one today. First of all, I'm going to turn it over. I'm going to remove the little rubber pads off the bottom and remove the five screws that hold it together. I didn't really need to remove that pad because there's no screw behind it, but just for consistency's sake, I removed the five screws. Now I'll just set that off to the side over here. Now to be able to tell if this is on or off to have a light on it, we need to find the power. I don't want to run off the 9 volt over inside here. Because I'm going to be using LED. I'm going to use 5 volts. Now, looking at the manual that came with it, it has this little breakout tells you how the rear connector is laid out. And if you see on it, you have a 5 volt right there, then you have a 0 volt, which is ground. That's this right here, 5 volt, 9 volt, slot, ground. What I want to do is I want to hook an LED up to the 5 volt and the ground. Now I'm, And then I'm going to put it in the case. Now I'm not going to hook it up here on the edge connector though, because if I do that, then the first time you slide something in there, you're going to break the wiring. So I chased it back down. The ground goes to here, so I can hook my ground up right here. No problem with that. And if I chase my 5 volt back a little bit, I have this little connection right here that goes to a capacitor. I can hook my wire onto that. Now I'm hooked up to 5 volts. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to run my wire over to here. I'm going to drill a little hole in the case and run an LED through the top. This is the LED I'm going to use right here. A little red LED. It's a small one. It's not a big one. So the materials I'm going to, be able, I'm going to need for this is my LED. A resistor, and I'll put the resistance up on the screen. I can't tell off the top of my head which one it was. Some wire to hook everything up. Soldering iron, some flux, some solder. And then when I get to it, I need to drill, to drill a hole there. Put it through the side. And then I got some shrink wrap tubing. Shrink wrap tubing that I'll use that I'll just cover the wires up a little bit as necessary if I need to. So the first thing I'm going to do is I want to hook my, my wire up here. So I'm going to run the wire over here, mm, yep, just like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split the wire down to here. I just had this extra wire, I have a whole bunch of wire laying around, so I grabbed one that has red and a contrasting color. Red will be power and the other color will be ground. I'm going to take it down to there, so I'm going to open these two wires up. Take it down to there. Okay, so now I have my power is going to go to that one, and my ground is going to go to that one there. So we start stripping some wire here. My soldering iron is already preheated, so I shouldn't have a problem with that. That's there. That one's going to there, right there. Always double check and triple check what you do. Never just assume you know what you're doing. That one's going to go there. Then I'm going to need, probably ground is going to be right about here. I'll cut it right about there. Strip me off a little bit of the wire there. All right, now I'm going to tin it. Let's get these out of the way. I don't lose my LED and stuff yet. I'm going to tin the wire. This is flux. If you're soldering, you need to use flux. If you don't use flux, it's almost impossible to get anything to stick to the solder and the metal. So what I do is I dip it in there, get a nice good whiff of the smell of the flux, which actually I like the smell of. It's probably killing my brain cells. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to tin this a little bit, just get a little bit of solder. Come on solder, stop rolling around in your case. I'm going to tin this a little bit. Come on solder, work with me. Alright, solder's being pain. You know, when you get a problem, when you get an issue like that, when the solder will not melt, 
Odds are your tip is dirty. I keep this monster file here and I just sand this thing down a little bit. Get a nice clear spot to work with. I was doing a lot of desoldering earlier today, so that's quite possible that that's dirty from all the desoldering when I was removing some bad chips on the computer. See, look at it melt. See how it stuck to it that time? All right, so what I've done, I'm tinning this. The reason why I want to tin it is I don't want the wires fraying out over the place. Now, to hook this up, again, follow my wire to there, to that one right there. I'm going to set it right here. I'm going to try to show you what I'm doing the same time I'm doing it. I'm going to set it right there. I still have a little bit of solder left on the soldering iron. Just enough to tap it. See that? Just barely get it on there. Now I need some more solder just for the other one. I always dip back into the flux every time I change and get solder. Just seems to make things easier. Now you know what? Before I hook this one on, I'm going to take advantage of this little thing. And snake my wire through that. That way my wire doesn't flop around. There we go. Let's lift up. That's right, you lift up. There you go. Good. See, now look at that. Now that wire's not going to flop around anywhere and catch on anything. Now, twist my wires. It's like cable management. Take time, do it right. You'll never have a problem later. All right, so I got my wire right where I want it, right there. That's where I want to put it. Dip. I need some more solder. Come on. Hold it in place until the shine goes off of the solder. That means the metal is cool enough to let go. There. Now it's hooked up nicely and it's not going to go anywhere. And now I'm going to hook this up down here. So I'm going to pause the camera while I get the Dremel set up and drill a hole. Okay, I looked up my various Dremel bits and I found this one right here which seems to be pretty close to the size of the LED I'm going to use. Now what I want to do is, I'm going to flip it over, so first of all, I don't want to end up losing these screws, so let me just, and one goes off behind my bench, so I did lose one screw, which I have to get on the floor to go chase down. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just set the case back on here for now so that I can flip it over and have it be supported and not flopping around on me. I want to put my... Uh, right here we go. I want to put my LED up here in the corner. Say evenly, right about... Yeah, that's a good spot right there. So that's where I want to put it. So I'm going to take my Dremel and drill me a nice little hole. And there's nothing behind here. The case, the board, the motherboard's not in the way of it. But be careful what you're doing. Now, I'm going to be blocking your view. You're not going to see me drilling it too easily. Unfortunately, I'm sorry about that. There. Now, all I did is I drilled a nice little hole in the plastic. I went, I didn't grind into it or anything. I just gently drilled the hole in. Let's clean up some of the excess. I'm gonna take my LED and just set it in there, see if it fits, see if it fits in the hole. Fits in the hole nicely. So that's what I wanted. So we're done with the Dremel. That can go to the side. Now you could have just used a drill. You could use a soldering iron and just melt a little hole in there if you wanted. But I had the Dremel. Use the Dremel. And see as you can see, nowhere near anything inside. Now I'm going to try to be cute and get to this, but I think I may end up having to, you know what? I'm not going to try to be cute. I'm going to have to actually unhook this to get that down in there. Unhook the motherboard from the bottom, I believe. I don't want to take a chance on not getting it in. I'm going to have to use hot glue to make it stay in place. So let's get set up here. I'm going to remove the motherboard. There are two screws holding it in. One right here, one right under there. Now be careful taking this motherboard off because you have your keyboard connected to it. You don't want to tear that membrane. You want to be very careful about that membrane. So go gentle. I'm just setting this off to the side. Out of the way. Just like that. See the membrane right there? I don't want that damaged. 
So I'm just going to set this off to the side. It is a good spot. All right. Now I'm just going to check my fit. Make sure I can go in the hole. See if it's in the hole nicely right there. Now what I'm going to do is I have to hook up my wiring. First thing I do is I take my LED. I look on the LED. On the LED there's a flat side and a rounded side. I'm going to take the flat side. Oh, hang on, let me verify this. Again, I'm going to look at my diagram. My diagram says, I would bring this over there, but I don't have, well, you know what? Okay, here. I can bring it over, okay. This is my breadboard I got done up here that I did one up already for, so I know which way everything goes. It's for a different computer, but it gives the same idea. Round goes to resistor, goes to ground, or goes to power. And I know it doesn't matter which way the resistor goes on, but I'm just going to take a second, twist that into this one, like so, just to make sure that she's hooked up good. All right, so that's on resistor to positive, and positive is going to be that, negative is going to be there. Let me just twist my, my wire so that I got a good... And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just touch them once I put get put power back in. Okay, put power back into the board. Try not to cover up the LED so you can see that it actually is going to light up. Okay, we're going to touch that one to power. See, you can see. She does work, so I did hook it up wrong. Now I got it hooked up right. So I wonder, maybe I got too close to that with the heat and I melted inside. That's a possibility. All right, so this time we won't do it that way. Unplug this. This time, I'm gonna leave some excess wire. Cut off that there. I'm going to just Stay right about here. I want to leave some excess so I'm not putting a lot of heat up in there. I, I bet you, the more I think about it, the more I'm sure maybe I didn't just melt the LED inside. So what we're going to do is going to hook that up there. Like that. This is solder. Happy smoke. Come on, happy smoke. Get in there. That's right, you glue it together. All right, now that's all done. Those are connected, remove the excess. All right, now let's do our step by step. So after you mess up once, and then you get paranoid and you keep checking to make sure it works right. So this step, I'm gonna plug her back in again. And I just wanna make sure she still does work. Right, so she does dark still. Okay, next up, we need some wire. All right, if you wonder what I'm doing, I'm off camera getting the wire. So I got more red, more brown. Again, red is going to be positive, brown is going to be negative. So let's get out the wiring here. Red's going to be positive, positive is resistor.
Now, I am not an electrician per se, so if you know anything more than me about this, let me know in the comments. This has worked for me, putting LEDs together like this. If I'm doing it wrong, just let me know. I'm not too proud to say that I can't learn something new. All right, so that wire is hooked up. And again, let's remove the excess. I shouldn't whistle. YouTube may give me a content violation. I don't know what song that would be, but it's probably a song. I've had that song by, I think it's Styx, Renegade, stuck in my head all day. I learned a trick. I, I like to just give trivia while I'm going. A trick on how to get your words out of your ear when you got a song stuck in your ear. From what I learned, is that the reason why sometimes songs are stuck in your ear is your brain is trying to complete the pattern so it can figure out how to store it. I know it's kind of weird thinking that way, but your brain does store stuff. And it's trying to complete the pattern and it can't find the pattern to store it away. So if there's a song that you know by heart, you get a song stuck in your head, just start singing the other song that you know by heart. And nine times out of ten, the song that you... Sing it in your head. Don't sing it out loud. Sing it in your head. And nine times out of ten, the song that's stuck in your head will go away. My song is Monday Monday by, uh, I don't know, Mamas and Papas, Third Dimension. I don't know who it was. But that song, Monday Monday, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, I get a song stuck in my head. I start just singing that Monday Monday song in my head, and it goes away. I've been doing this for about eight years. It works consistently. Okay, my phone rang now, so I had to pull off, but this is what I end up with. Now what I want to do is I want to test and see if this works. Again, I'm going to just strip the end for now, just so I can touch the wires on there. Really, I shouldn't be touching the wires on there. That's not very safe, Millie, but well, I'm just going to do it. That's the ground. That's the positive. Remember, that's my positive. That's the ground. And put my light up here so you can see it too. We still got power, so we still got light, so see, we're still good. Now, unplug that. Now I need to isolate this so that it won't short out. Now, to do that, I am going to actually am going to use the shrink tubing. But first off, I'm going to take and put a little hot. Let's see, I want to see something here. Let's set this back here. How much actual space do I have? Well, I got a lot of space there. I got a lot of space. Well, I'm going to have to bend this, but I got a lot of space. Yes, see, I'm just lying. I'm just bending the wires the way I want them because this is going to go in there like that. Then I'm just going to let the wire be loose here. You want to go that way? You know, I can. Again, let's see what I got here. Yeah, I may be better going that way. Yeah. Careful with that membrane there. So if I go that way, yeah, I can do that. And I don't have to wrap it. I can use the hot glue to hold it all together. Okay, so let's get this. How much more space? Can I bend you? Can I turn you? Can I turn you? Can I turn you? Can I? Yeah, okay. Be very careful doing that. I don't recommend doing that. Unless you know what you're doing. <laughs> I was being very careful. If you have one that you've had to trim at one time, you can never do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in here. As such. Get the hot glue out. I'm going to hot glue this thing in place. So it won't touch anything. You're like, but that's metal. That's metal. Yeah, I know. i got to be careful of that. Well, maybe I can do this first. Let's take this first. Let's take some electrical tape. 
slice me off a piece of electrical tape. I can take and I can just slide this in here. Yeah. Make sure nothing's getting next to each other there. Just put a little bit of electrical tape on there and I'll put another piece on there. I'm still going to hot glue it down. I'm just going to isolate it so that it can't touch nothing. This is just hobbyist. I'm not trying to be a perfectionist. I am not in any way, shape, or form a perfectionist. I am not an electrician. But I do understand things. All right, now let's get out the hot glue gun. The old beat up pink gun. And I got a plugger in here. All right, so now I have inserted that in there. I'm going to take some hot glue. I'm just going to apply some hot glue right around the edge here. Then I'll put some more down here on the wires. This doesn't have a, it's, it's very light, so it's not going to like flop around. I just don't want it to flop around. <laughs> I'll move this wire down here a little farther. Make sure it stays clear of the expansion connector. Get the little stringies out of the way. Hot glue is safe for the computers. It's non-conductive. It won't hurt anything other than just be messy. And once this is dry, then I will rotate the board back carefully again without... In fact, no, actually, I can rotate it back right now. Take my wire up here. You know, I'm just going to take my wire right here. Yeah. That's very good right there, Millie. All right, so see what I've done is, it still hasn't dried yet. But I've rotated over here. Now i got to put my screws in. And they always get confused as to which screws are inside and which ones are outside because of all the different holes. So I look at this real quickly and I see which ones, I see that it's this one and that one are the inside screws that hold the motherboard in place. And they were these small little ones here. So that one right there. <laughs> and one more over here. Now this may seem like something very simple to do, but watch when I turn it over. I already sneak peeked without the camera on. Let's see what it looks like. I didn't have it plugged in yet. And now I'm just going to run this over here. Again, I'm going to take advantage of this thing being here and use it to help manage my cables. And this one's going there. I don't know if my soldering area is hot enough yet. It's getting there. Put some solder on this. ground attached. Now remember this is my positive wire right here. I want to make sure I always get, get the right one. I got a little extra wire on it. I don't like it. I don't like it being too long. Let's cut off this little piece of extra here. Now Just to make sure I'm getting the right one again. All right, that's in there. That wire is out of the way. It's not going to get crushed. It's not going to get poked. It's not going to flop around, come outside. All right, so now unplug the soldering iron, unplug the glue gun. Let's put the case back on. 
I did drop a screw in the back. I gotta watch this. I just realized I gotta watch this right here. See that hole? I make sure I don't cover that up because that's where one of the screws go. But yeah, I did drop a screw in the back, so I gotta chase that one down. But for right now, I will put in the ones I have right here. I know you're like, come on, show us what it looks like. Show us what it looks like. You'll get to see. Don't worry. You'll get to see it. I don't know why I got one small screw. Probably from these holes. I'll put it in this one here, and then I got to chase. Like I said, I got to get the other screw for the back. For the other one there. Uh oh. That's why I got one small screw. Small screws go to the front. All right. And I bet you the one that fell on the floor back there is a small screw. Learn something new every day. As I was pushing down on it, it had a lot of still had movement in it, even though they were tight. Hope it didn't bottom out that screw on this side. We will find out, won't we? Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna chase down. Well, actually, let me show you. I was gonna say, we plug her in. We gotta do the reveal. I'm gonna show you what it looks like. Gotta do a reveal. Let me plug the wall warts in. Let me give it 9 volts DC in the reveal. Look at that. Looks like it belongs there. Look at that. All right, let me chase down the other screw, put the feet on it, and I'm going to put it over there on the desk, and we'll see what it looks like. And here we go. Looks like it's made to have it. Looks so pretty with that there. It doesn't look like a toy no more. It's got an on and off light. Sweet. Mm -hmm.